All right then, ladies and gentlemen, it is official. Update 5.2 is dropping tomorrow for Battlefield 5, and I've got all the patch notes right here in front of me. So buckle up and get ready for a whirlwind of information because this is one massive patch for the game. And finally, in this video, we're going to be looking at some proper weapon balance information and statistics that we can pick apart. Finally, we have the proper information, and we don't have to speculate anymore. Today's video is sponsored by Elgato. If you're looking to step up your content creation game, or you're just looking to share some cool moments with your friends, then Elgato has got you covered with their HD60S Plus capture card. For more information, click that link at the top of the description. Okay then, before we dive into all of that weapon balance information, and trust me, we have so much to talk about, but I want to clarify some release details about this update tomorrow. The patch itself that you get on your Xbox One or your PS4 or your PC, you'll get that tomorrow and it's going to deploy everything into the game, but some features won't be activated right away. The new Wake Island map, that is said to be launching on December the 12th, and the Community Games feature, that's scheduled to go live on December the 9th, after DICE tests the feature once it goes live with the patch tomorrow. It could be active tomorrow, it's just that DICE wants to test it and make sure that it actually works properly. And to me, that's a good move considering you look at the track record of Battlefield 5, things releasing and then them not working properly the moment they go live. DICE is trying to avoid that by giving community games a few days extra before they set it live so they can do their own tests. Now, the four new weapons, the Type 2 ASMG, the BAR, the Type 97 LMG and the Grease Gun, they will go live over the next few weeks of Chapter 5 as unlocks for the Tides of War. The weapons balance changes, the vehicle damage rebalance, and all of the other fixes and tweaks, they're going to go live the moment you've downloaded the patch and you boot up the game tomorrow. So just to recap, Wake Island on December 12th, Community Games on December 9th, and the four new weapons, they'll go live weekly across Chapter 5. Right, no more preamble. Let's get into these weapon balance changes. This is going to be, what, the fourth or fifth or 25th time that we've discussed this here on the channel. But finally, DICE has presented the most information that we've had so far in this update blog post. And we've got a lot more detail this time around. And it really does give us our proper first look at how these weapons are going to play after the update. So first of all, we're going to go with the SMGs. Generally, SMGs are going to see a big damage reduction at long range, solidifying them as close range weapons. Some SMGs that fire faster, they're going to have some damage reductions at close range because they can output their damage faster. Some slower firing SMGs, they will get a bit more range damage and that gives medics some extra range potential, but generally overall, SMGs will remain close range weapon options. The Suomi, the Tommy Gun, the MP20A and the ZK383, when you have its rate of fire boosted via the specialization tree, these weapons will be categorized as close range SMGs. They're now going to have a 5 to 13 bullet to kill model with an effective range between 0 and 15 meters. Their starting ammo has been massively bumped up to 150 bullets at a minimum and these weapons, they have high rate of fire, so they now have reduced damage per shot, and they have a faster damage drop-off. Basically, use these things right up close with people, and they'll still absolutely devastate your enemies. The ZK383 without its rate of fire boost specialization, the MP40, the Sten, the EMP, and the Type 100, these are classed as balanced SMGs. These weapons will have a 4 to 12 bullet to kill model, apart from the Type 100, which has a 5 to 12 bullet to kill model. They all have an effective range target of 0 to 20 meters, and they have that same starting ammo buff as the previous close range SMGs, 150 bullets minimum. These SMGs have slightly extended damage drop off, they're easier to use, but generally they have a lower rate of fire. And then we have the MP34 and the MAB38. They are going to be classified as AR SMGs, so assault rifle SMGs. These have a 5 to 8 bullet to kill model, and they have an effective range from 10 to 30 meters. These two guns, they have less damage drop off at range at the cost of lower damage output at close range compared to other SMGs. 
These are the two SMGs that will give medics some extra range options on more open maps. You with me so far? That's quite a few changes and we've still got plenty of weapon categories to go through, but don't, don't be scared if you have to roll back the video and listen to it again, trust me. It took me a little while to get my head around these things too. Next up, assault rifles. The changes here, they affect both the minimum and the maximum damage, reducing the close range performance, but keeping the advantage at long range over SMGs. Now, specifically, the M1907 SF, that's been rebalanced differently so that it performs like an SMG in order to keep the assault class a good option for close range gunplay. The Ribe Rolls is now a 5 to 7 bullet to kill gun with an effective range between 15 and 40 meters. Spawn ammo is now set at 150 rounds. This is now your low rate of fire, powerful, long range assault rifle in Battlefield 5. The STG is now a 5 to 8 bullet to kill gun with an effective range between 10 and 30 meters. Spawn ammo is also set to 150 bullets. This is now an assault rifle with good damage per shot and good accuracy. The 30 round mag means at close range, where it isn't quite as good as some of the other assault rifles, you can still get a bit of spam fire in there and you might be able to take down an enemy. The Sturmgewehr 1.5 is now a 6 to 9 bullet to kill gun with an effective range between 10 and 30 meters. Starting ammo is set to 160 rounds. This is a high rate of fire assault rifle with increased close range damage but a fast damage drop off and it's another AR that will mimic the SMG playstyle and give assaults a close range option. And speaking of the SMG playstyle, the M1907 SF is now a 5 to 13 bullet to kill assault rifle with an effective range of 0 to 15 meters. Spawn ammo is set to 160. This is the definitive assault SMG that you should use if you want to play the close quarters game as an assault player. And then finally, the Breda PG. This is now a 5 to 6 bullet to kill rifle with a much longer effective range of 20 to 50 meters and spawn ammo is set to 140. This is the hard hitting burst fire assault rifle in the game and it can reach a lot further than some of the other automatic assault weapons. This and the Ribe Rolls, they're going to be competing at longer ranges. Okay, third on the list, LMGs. They follow a similar trend to the assault rifles being balanced towards mid to long range combat in general by sacrificing close range damage. Here the FG42 and the LS26 they're being balanced like SMGs so the support class still has some close range options besides just picking a shotgun. So the balanced LMGs here, the K7, the Bren gun and the Lewis gun are now 5 to 8 bullet to kill weapons with an effective range between 10 and 30 meters and starting ammo that sits at 180. The close range LMGs as I mentioned, the FG42 and the LS26, they now have more damage drop off to limit their effective range. The FG42 has a 4 to 11 bullet to kill and the LS26 is a 5 to 13 bullet to kill gun with both having an effective range target of 0 to 15 meters. And then the ranged LMG, which is only the Madsen because that's the only one left, that has a flat 6 bullet to kill model now. And that makes sure the weapon at range is an absolute powerhouse, but at close range it's likely to lose gunfights to SMGs. The effective range is beyond 20 meters, so that puts it out beyond most of the SMGs in the game. So up close, you should expect to lose some gunfights, but at longer ranges, you should be dominating quite a few people. Next on the list is MMGs. DICE is rebalancing these weapons to focus them as super close range panic weapons, quote unquote, when an enemy just pops out in front of you and surprises you, and it focuses them on longer range engagements. So the VGO and the MG42, they are now 5 to 13 bullet to kill weapons that have fast damage drop off to compensate for their extremely high rate of fire. Of course, with rate of fires that fast, that still means at range that you can expect to kill people fairly easily with so many bullets peppering targets, but the likelihood is that now at those longer ranges, you will be doing less damage to a point that 
you'd be better off getting up from the position you're in and just moving closer to the enemy that you're trying to kill. So hopefully that means less laser beam MMGs in Battlefield 5. The middle of the road MMG, so the MG34, the S2200 and the M1922, they are now 6 to 9 bullet to kill weapons with an effective range between 10 and 30 meters. So less severe damage drop off compensates for their lower rate of fire, but if you've got good aim, you should still be able to kill people pretty fast at range. And then the Browning MG, this sort of sits on its own. It's a 5 to 8 bullet to kill weapon with an effective range between 20 and 50 meters. So this thing up close is going to lose to most other weapons that are better in that range, but at longer ranges, it's got less damage drop-off compared to other MMGs, and it's already got good handling stats as well, so that makes it perfect for ranged attacks or just suppressing enemies from a little bit further away. The next weapon category is semi-auto rifles, and a lot of these have been balanced individually because they are quite different to a lot of the other weapons within that class, but generally, you're looking at slightly less range damage, but you're still going to be sitting further out than most other weapon categories in the game, and you'll still be able to reach quite a lot further than most of the automatic weapons can. So make sure you pay attention to these ones, because these changes, they kind of surprise me a little bit, because they're way less severe than I thought they'd be. The M1A1 Carbine is now a 4 to 6 bullet to kill rifle with an effective range of 10 to 50 meters. So you've got a good magazine capacity, a fast reload, a fairly high rate of fire and relatively low recoil. It's kind of a good all-rounder semi-auto rifle. The AGM-42, this is a flat 4 bullet to kill rifle with an effective range beyond 15 meters. It sacrifices some close range power for greater long range damage potential. Low ammo count also came into consideration here. Less ammo per mag means that you should be going for headshots, which in turn lowers the bullet to kill due to the headshot multiplier. So this thing could be extremely powerful with a flat 4 bullet to kill model. The Gewehr 1.5 is now a 3 to 6 bullet to kill gun with an effective range between 0 and 30 meters. So this is kind of your close range semi-automatic rifle. You get that massive magazine with this weapon and that does mean lower damage output overall and lower damage output at range. But as I said, it is good for competing at close range and medium range as well. Then we have the Turner SMLE and the Mass 44. These are both now 4 to 5 bullet to kill weapons with effective ranges of 15 to 50 meters. They are both fairly fast firing semi-auto rifles so they kind of sit as middle of the road options here. And then the M1 Garand, the Carabin 1938M, the Gewehr 43 and the Selvslader M1916, they are all being considered as heavy hitting a semi-automatic rifles and they have three to four bullet to kill models on them. Their effective range is 20 meters and beyond and that makes them the proper ranged options in the assault class. Next up we have the self-loading rifles in the recon class. These aren't being rebalanced based on their damage output but they are being rebalanced on their rate of fire. And that is kind of unfortunate because DICE chose not to include any rate of fire changes in the blog post despite the fact they've previously told us that they will be changing the rate of fire for most of the weapons alongside their damage output. So that's a little bit of an oversight. But basically, you're going to find that these weapons will perform differently and they will be categorized as the following. The Model A and the RSC, they'll be your aggressive self-loading rifles and they'll have slow rates of fire but high damage. And the ZH-29 and the Selbslader 1906, they are your long-range self-loading rifles, and they have very slow rates of fire. For shotguns, DICE is reducing the one-hit kill range by about 2 meters across all shotguns in the game, and the drilling is going to be your long-range option, the M1897 will become your middle-of-the-road option, and the 12G Auto is going to be your super-aggressive, super-close-range option. Pistol carbines, they're having their damage reduced and their rate of fire increased, but we don't have any details on that rate of fire increase, so again, a little bit of an oversight. And then for sniper rifles and anti-material rifles, they're not being rebalanced, they're just getting more starting ammo that's been increased. No other changes to those weapon classes. 
So that's all the weapon balance information that DICE gave us in the blog post, so now I guess I'll tell you kind of what I think about it, because I still can't really tell you, because I haven't played with the new setup yet. I can't tell you if this is a good or a bad change without playing it, and with the lack of rate of fire and recoil values in the patch notes, we can't be certain of how much of a time to kill increase this update is really going to bring, but what I can say is that the changes, at least in bullets to kill, don't look as bad as I thought they might do. There are some standouts that still caught my eye, like the 6-9 bullet to kill Sturmgewehr assault rifle and the max 13 bullet to kill SMGs at long range. They kind of did ring alarm bells in my head, but with the bullet to kill information now here in front of us, it seems to me that DICE is really trying to cut out those, those extreme long range killing potentials of weapon classes that were never designed to operate in that way in the first place. I really see this update as a way for DICE to cut out those annoying deaths that you receive when some enemy hopefully tries to clip you with a bullet at extreme long range and take you down. DICE is trying to remove that element of the gunplay and they're trying to emphasize the roles of each of the weapons in the game and then make you use the right gun in the right situation. As I've said, I've still got my concerns with some of those wild 13 bullet to kill maximums. It kind of feels like you'd just be tickling players instead of killing them at long range, but I saw less of those standouts than I was expecting. The semi-automatic rifle stats, they surprised me quite a lot because they didn't change as much as I thought they were going to. The M1A1 carbine, that can still four-shot kill players at close range. The AGM-42 is a flat four bullet to kill at all ranges. The M1 Garand and the Gewehr 43, they're still three to four shot kill weapons. They've not really changed a huge amount. The Madsen, being a flat six bullet to kill at all ranges, that's going to be a really powerful weapon if you can control the recoil. So, on the face of it, with only the information we have, which is bullets to kill, I don't think this change is as bad as we thought it might be, and it makes me a little bit happier going into tomorrow where I'm going to play this patch for the first time, but honestly what I'd really have liked from these patch notes is information for all of the weapon changes, because if we don't have all of the data from a before and an after situation, we can't tell what kind of update we're really going into, and that's kind of concerning. So yeah, I'm still a little bit confused about what this update is really going to bring to Battlefield 5 tomorrow, but of course I will have another video going live tomorrow with my proper hands-on impressions of this new weapon balance system, but that's kind of all the details we have right now. I kind of wish I had access to those recoil changes and those rate of fire changes for the guns as well, but sadly those weren't included in the update notes. I will say, actually, that the patch notes are already extremely long without those extra bits of information in them. There are loads of other changes that I specifically didn't talk about in this video because I wanted to focus on the weapon balance, so maybe it wasn't such a bad thing that they weren't included, but at the same time, they're really important pieces of information, and they should have been in the patch notes. I'll be covering off the rest of the patch tomorrow regardless in my video, so stick around for my full impressions, but until then, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.